Hey everybody, welcome back. So today I'm doing my wrap up for the month of May. I read 21 books in the month of May. So of those, eight of them were physical books, seven of them were audiobooks, and six of them were ebooks. Of the, the different genres that I read, seven of them were fantasy, one of them was science fiction, three were historical fiction, there was a cooking book, there were two art books, one that was contemporary, one that was just like a, a children's picture book. Two of them were nonfiction, one of them was a mystery, one of them was a manga, and one was... And one I'm just not sure what it was, so I'll just put it in fiction. As far as the audience goes for the books that I read, 13 of them were adult books, three of them were young adults, one was a middle grade, one of them was a children's book, that was the picture book, and then three of them I just wouldn't say are really made for any age group specifically and those are like the cooking books and the art books I would say that they're just uh, pretty much made for everyone. So most of the books I rated pretty high. I liked most everything that I read this month. I rate things on a 10 point scale and I didn't have anything less than like a 5. I'm just gonna go over the books that I read this month. My least favorite book, there were two down at the bottom and these ones I gave five out of ten stars. The first one was Nothing to See Here by Kevin Wilson. This is about a woman who is asked to take care of these children who when they get upset they light on fire. I I thought there were some good themes in there but it just they were not executed well. So the next one that I read that was just okay I said I gave it five out of ten. That would be With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. And I just didn't really connect with this one. This was a young adult. It had some romance in it. It was about a young girl who got pregnant in high school and she wants to become a chef. And it's her journey to become a chef. Just wasn't for me. So the next one that I read was The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. And this was another young adult book. And I guess I would give this maybe five and a half to six stars out of ten. It just wasn't my favorite, I guess. It was a fantasy story about this family that was in charge of taking care of the graveyard. And if they don't take care of the graveyard, then the dead will come back and they call the dead the bone houses. The next one that I listened to on audiobook was called Extinction Ashes by Nicholas Sansbury Smith and Anthony J. Metrilori. And this is the third book in the Extinction Cycle Dark Ages. And this is a kill em up zombie apocalypse into the world. And it's a military focused book. And it's the third one in the series. Uh, I do enjoy the series. I like all the action, the killing of zombies, zombies killing people, all that kind of stuff, and comes up with some really interesting, cool ideas. My biggest problem with it, the only reason I don't rate any of them higher, is because the character work is not my favorite. And I gave that one six and a half out of ten stars. So the next one is a nonfiction. This is the Mindfulness and Acceptance, Expanding the Cognitive Behavioral Tradition. And this is by Stephen Hayes, Victoria Follett, and of course Mar Marsha Linehan. I gave this one six and a half stars out of ten stars. The thing that I liked about it is that it did talk about how we keep trying to get rid of our negative emotions and that we want to be positive all the time and how that's really not possible and sometimes we need to be okay feeling those negative feelings like sadness and depression and anxiety and all of those kind of things. But it, it just touched on it. So the next one was just a picture book that I read. It was on the Kindle. Every year in April, or at least for the past three years, Amazon has had a day where you can get like 10 free books. And they're all books from around the world. It's called Amazon World Book Day. And they they give you these 10 books. They're translated. So Some Days was a picture book. It was written by Maria Wernick and it was translated by Laurence Schemel. And I can't remember what language this book was originally written in, uh, but it was just a picture book. It was short. It was cute. About a mother and daughter. 
So the next one was a manga and this is the fourth book in the Call Me Can't Communicate series. This is about a girl named Komi who has terrible social anxiety so much so that she cannot speak in any type of social social situation and she's trying to make friends and this is her story and the story of her friends who are helping her make friends. I gave this book 8 out of 10 stars. So the next one this series, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. I am enjoying it, but there are, it's really hard to read. And this is the third book in the Malaysian Book of the Fallen, this Memories of Ice by Steven Erickson. Kind of what I'm starting to feel about this series is that this is a series about this really chaotic world that is ruled very chaotically and all the gods are constantly at war with each other and trying to overthrow each other and the poor humans and the other species that live there are kind of just caught in the middle. I gave this eight and a half stars out of ten. Now along with Memories of Ice, and again this one would be probably on the same level, it has the same rating, eight and a half out of ten stars. Uh, the Vanishing Half by Brett Bennett. And this is a book about pair of twin girls who are they are african-american but they are have light enough skin that they can pass for white and one of them decides to live as a white person and one of them decides to uh, live as a black person and it's about them so the next one was age of myth by michael j sullivan this is the first book in legends of the first empire this takes place in the world of the right area uh, Chronicles and Ray Area Revelations, but this is before that, so a lot of the myths and everything from those other series are, this is like the story behind them. Uh, there's humans and then there's the Frey. I guess they're elves as we would think of them. Frey are immortal. Uh, the humans consider them gods. It involves a, a boy who, uh, one of the Frey kills his father and he, in a fit of rage, kills the Frey, so he is now known as the God Killer. One I gave it uh, eight and a half out of ten stars. Uh, the next one that I read was Eaters of the Dead by Michael Crichton. This one was about Vikings and an Arab man who falls in with these Vikings and to try and kill the fire dragon. So as I'm reading this, it's the the format's a little bit different because it's set up like a these are historical documents that were found and that this this group of researchers is translating it and so it has kind of footnotes and different things in it. It was really good and of course as I'm reading it I suddenly realized that this is just the story of Beowulf retold as if it really happened. So I did enjoy it. It was good. I gave it eight and a half out of ten stars. Uh, next book was Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in the Alex Stern series. This follows Galaxy Stern and she is involved in this secret society and there's a mystery murder mystery kind of at the core of it that they believe is has to do with these rituals and Galaxy is trying to solve this mystery so I gave this one eight and a half out of ten stars. Uh, next one that I read was And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. This is a mystery. A group of people go to this island and there's this little poem, people are dying, and it's based on this poem. And kind of at the end, everyone's dead, there's nobody else out there on the island. And, you know, it's about figuring out who done it. Next one was The Indigo Girl by Natasha Boyd. This is a historical fiction about this girl who's, she is left in charge of these, the family's plantations. And she decides that she's going to grow indigo. The slaves at the plantation know about making indigo and so she makes kind of a an agreement with them that she will teach them to read and write if they were to teach her to make indigo. I also gave this one eight and a half out of ten stars. The next book that I listened to was called Face, One Square Foot of Skin. This was by Justine Bateman and this was a collection of stories of women as they're getting older and how getting older reflects on them and reflects how society sees them. So I really enjoyed this one. I connected with a lot of the stories in there. I thought they were really great. 
and I gave this one nine and a half out of ten stars. The next one was Everblaze by Shannon Messenger. This is the third book in the Keepers of the Lost Cities. This series is one that keeps getting better. This series follows a girl named Sophie who finds out she's an elf because she can read people's minds and it's all of the... Uh, the next one was The Brotherhood of the Wolf by David Farland and this is the second book in the Rune Lord series. Uh, this is a fantasy series. It's about these people called Rune Lords and they get their abilities from by taking them from other people. So if you want to look pretty you would take someone's glamour. If you want to be have a good memory you would take some the memory from someone else that would make your memory sharper. But the thing is as or the people have to give it to you but they become weak in whatever attribute that they give you. And this series I really like. I like that there's a there's a cost to the magic in this series. Um, this one was a 10 star out of 10 stars. And the last book, my favorite book that I've read so far this month, or in the month of May, was Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Stormlight Archives. Uh, we follow in, in order to keep your magic, there are certain rules that you have to follow, but you don't always know what they are. And Kaladin in this one kind of violates the rules a little bit and has to kind of figure out who he is and what he's about and what he's supposed to do as a Knight of the Radiant. It was great. I loved it. This was my favorite book of the month of May. It's also like I got my the quote that I liked this month the best from that book as well. This was from Words of Radiance and it's it's not a lie, Shalan said, if everyone understands and knows what it means. Hmm. Those are some of the best lies. And that quote just kind of made me think that yeah, sometimes the best lies are the ones that we all think we understand and know what they mean. So those are all the books that I read in the month of May. Those are all the books that I read in the month of May. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. I post new videos on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Thanks for joining me.